people care more about the origin of the products and services. Now, as we really delve into defining value, uh, it's not just the performance and the product and the quality and everything else that we can tout as being a U.S. manufacturer, but really it's the purpose and community that I think we now realize that we've lost uh, by offshoring manufacturing. Most people will recognize the importance of job creation that it brings, giving people not just an income, but giving them purpose. Uh, there are over 230 families that depend on us as a manufacturer here. And the skill set across that is huge, to the higher tech, scientific R&D side, all the way to assembly, receiving, shipping, clerk positions that are uh, an important part to many people to really provide for their family. As job creation happens, we need the infrastructure behind those manufacturing jobs, which really supports a broader economy, not just manufacturing. A lot of the reason that manufacturing has gone offshore is cost, uh, solely cost in many cases. And when it's just price, you know, you lose purpose, you, you lose the value, you, you lose community uh, when it comes to uh, why we do what we do that erodes even on the education of STEM, uh, of the science, math, technology uh, studies out there. So it really does feed back to the economy on the education side, not just manufacturing. And being a U.S. manufacturer, we love to give back. There's a lot of different avenues that we, we take and that we are proud to support. But beyond that, it's the national stuff that we do on the education level of uh, supporting STEM and FIRST and all these other organizations that are really bringing the next generation of jobs into America. Hey, I'm Mitchell Yula, and uh, I'm in a two-year apprenticeship program with Clifford, and uh, ultimately I'm going to get a degree in mechatronics. In a global economy, philanthropy is bigger from the U.S. than any other country. So the more manufacturing jobs and the more people are making and the more dollars that are uh, spent in America, the more America gives back to the global community. And that's an important element I think a lot of people don't put their finger on. It's exciting to see uh, America's revitalization and important emphasis on manufacturing. Uh, offshoring, taking things overseas, uh, just doesn't impact the bottom line, but it impacts families and it gets back to really purpose and core values. A lot of companies out there like to speak innovation, talk about how innovative they are. But one of our key strengths is our creativity with pneumatics. So this goes on all day. Not just the fact that we pioneered the whole industry. I mean, we created miniature pneumatics. This is um, an original CAD drawing of one of the very first cylinders that Leonard Clifford designed. And the interior seals he actually punched out of boot leather so that it could, uh, it could seal against the walls of the cylinder and actually have motion for the testing. And it's a really unique tour to see our own product producing our product. We say when we bring a machine in here, we will clipperdize it. Uh, you can tell, I mean, that's a really good example down there of all the clipper components. No other company can give a good a testament through their own product as Clippered can. So this particular one, it's got some automated capabilities of clippers using our valves just to automatically turn it on and off. We have the pneumatic brake. So when you turn this unit off, the brake will activate and stop the drill. Even, even at $300,000 machines we have back in the back, we take and put clipper stuff on it relatively quick. Right here is what we do our acrylic subplate. So once you get this thing all machined, all your air passes and all that are within the acrylic. So you don't have 10,000 little air lines. So, you know, all of this will end up in something like this. Only it would be smaller. But that's a complete unit with the uh, air passes is all built within. This particular one is all pneumatic, but we can incorporate electronic valves, we can incorporate anything on these. So what this room is getting now is what we call the Swiss machines. 
So these guys can run 24-7, lights out, unattended, but these, these particular ones are intended for some of our real, small, intricate parts that we just need hundreds of thousands of them a year. So what that thing is allowed to do is five operations. So every time it comes in, it's machining on five different bars. So it's allowed to do five different things, and then by the time it cuts it off, it's 90% done. This machine machines so much brass or steel or whatever that it, it collects the chips in wheelbarrows. These are the machines that can put out the part complete. So this is the real deal here. This is our bread and butter. This is where we want to go. These will run 24-7, 365. It's going in. It's machining all the cavities. What's really cool is it can come back. It can create that groove. It can create those four holes. It can drop this part out complete. It's ready to get cleaned and then used. This particular department is the modular valve assembly department. It is one of those departments that's been around for 40 years. If you look down this row, you'll see we are just using clippered valves for every tester, every press fixture, every clamp, every vise, pressure intensifiers to build up pressure for higher pressure applications. Okay, so this is the uh, production control department. We have the people putting the work out to the machines to have all the parts machined. And we also have the people that put the work out on the floor to have the finished valves complete. My name is Karen Parchman and I've been here 20 years and I'm making Clipper Special 906. It's a three stem. We put an O-ring on the stem. Then I put a drop of lot red Loctite 263 on the poppet with a spring, push the body on. Then I name roll, I date, and put two O-rings on, and then we test it. Quality people, quality products. That's been Clipper's slogan for many, many years. We really do, we hire quality people. Average tenor is well over 20 years. I've been with Clipper for 24 years. 15 years. 20 years. 23 years. 28 years. 29 years. 34 years. Almost 35 years. 40 years. 42 years, started in 1976. <laughs> my mother and my great aunts worked for Clifford. They thought it was a great company to work for, and I'm here to say it is. So when Clifford capitalizes on our values, we take that beyond just what happens here at Clifford. We need to partner with people who have those same core values, organizations that put people first like we do. And it's why we partner with Airline an organization that puts people first, that has the same core values, people who partner with us on the same level, not just product features, benefits, etc., but really core values. Who are we? What do we want to accomplish together? That's what drives this company forward. There's a lot just around the corner, and so keep an eye on Clipper.